How you got? Good to have you with us. The French president was in Berlin earlier to attend a summit on digital sovereignty as Europe looks to catch up with the US and China in the global AI race. That's right. Well, Sharon Emmanuel Macron joined his German counterpart Friedrich Merz and, the, and top EU leaders to call for more European innovation to counter the dominance of American big tech and China. Companies attending the summit pledged more than 12 billion euros in investments in the digital sector. The meeting comes as the European Union is set to propose a rollback of regulations on AI and data protection later this week. Here's the French president speaking at the event. Europe does want, doesn't want to be the client of the big entrepreneurs or the big solutions being provided either from US or from China. We clearly want to design our own solutions. This transformation presents us with a twofold challenge. Innovate to remain competitive while protecting our data, our infrastructure and more broadly our sovereignty. Well, among European tech companies attending the summit, biotech company Ogin announced a new project to build a pan-European infrastructure to make biological data AI ready. CEO Thomas Clozel joins me from Berlin. Great to have you on our show, Thomas. Hello, guys. Now, you have teamed up with two leading French and German cancer research centres to create this new agentic AI infrastructure, calling it a first step towards biological super intelligence. Could you explain what it is all about? Yeah, you know, like today, I mean, like uh, um, biology is just way too complicated for the human mind. People don't really understand why patients have cancer, why patients have Alzheimer and everything. So they need to, to, to be a new type of intelligence, a super intelligence, better than human, to be able to solve this type of problems and understand the cause of this disease and, and, and everything. So the idea was to gather two of the best hospitals in the world, uh, Gustave Roussy and La Charité Cancer Center, Berlin and Paris, to team up together to try to put in place an agentic interface that would enable data integration, harmonization, and be able to put some layers of new reasoning, new LLMs towards this biology, artificial super intelligence. In the end, what does it do? It just automates and helps taking better decisions for research and care. Will this then help doctors uh, more rapidly analyze if there's cancer or uh, if there's a cause for that and uh, perhaps prescribe the right kind of medication a lot more rapidly than they do today? That's the idea, but it is even more on the research side, like being able also to get better clinical trials, to run new hypotheses, what is the right hypothesis I should run, try to even like, you know, test uh, 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 new ideas. That's really the first, the ideation, then try to get to actual, you know, uh, uh, improved development and uh, decisions on the patient side. That's really the goal. I mean, once again, there, is, there needs to be a new type of intelligence to help uh, doctors and researchers uh, to be able to get to this, like, you know, really like causal intelligence, uh, super intelligence. To, to be above what we can be able to do today. And you know, like cancer demographics have changed a lot. We are seeing younger patients, for example, for pancreatic cancer, we can see 40 years old people that didn't know this before. Uh, why? We have no idea. So there needs to be new type of things. And the first step is, of course, putting the data together, uh, being able to build the right agent that can curate, uh, uh, harmonize data, clean up everything, to be able then to apply this like of new layers of new LLM and, 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 and intelligence reasoning models. So you talk about new, a new type of intelligence, a super intelligence, but isn't AI, artificial intelligence, already widely used in biology and healthcare? I mean, it, uh, it helped to develop COVID vaccines, for instance, uh, rapidly, didn't not it? Not too much, not too much. You know, like, not really, like microRNA was something, you know, around for 20 years. Ozempic, and Ozempic, you know, this drug has been like pushed like, you know, uh, an incredible like effect on people's health. And uh, when people talk about productivity, AI is important, but Ozempic is probably even more important in terms of what it has done to to to, to country productivity because people are less sick. And, and uh, but you know, I think like AI has not today been so successful in building uh, up new drugs. Uh, the COVID vaccine was mostly like a technology uh, microRNA for 20 years. Ozempic was not uh, uh, developed with AI. I think today AI is, there's a lot of pipelines, including Okin, but others, of new drugs pushing by new type of intelligence, accelerated trials. However, uh, I think AI hasn't done the, the full deal, which is actually being able to treat diseases where, for example, the classical pharma would have failed. Uh, treating Alzheimer's disease, uh, understanding the cause of cancer. So we are not there today. There is not enough data to be able to do it, and there is not the right reasoning models and the right LLM to go to this super intelligence. Once yeah. again, there will be an intelligence that you know will understand the cause of diseases, be able to predict response and everything.
Now, Europe is playing catch up with the US in large language models like yeah. chat, GPT for general <laughs> use. How is it positioned today then in the field of biomedical AI as you've been talking about? It's a great question. It's a great question. I think, you know, I think today, it's, uh, I think today is this type of new models like GPT-4, GPT-5, Gemini 2.5, uh, uh, are amazing models really, and but the, the train on, on the World Wide Web. So they cannot really, really bring the intelligence of actual patient data uh, for, from really curated centers with the key opinion leaders behind it. This is what Okin is building today. We're building Okin Zero, which is our own LLM. And we have shown on certain benchmarks better results than GPT-4 uh, in a recent paper. Uh, um, I mean, I, I think today, you know, this type of LLM, however, if they're trained on the right data, and even more, if they have the right reinforcement, Reinforcement meaning you have new lab, new data in the lab that come back to reinforce new usage data from people using the, the platform, new data from patients all the time. And this is what Okin can do, like infinite kind of a very, very deep the daily reinforcement of the, of the of the models that will really bring uh, you know new innovation. However, OpenAI is doing building a lot on 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 AI and biology today. You know, Sam Altman is in a company called Virtual Biosense doing amazing things. Fiji Simo just came in. She's French, as you know, and she's really, really interested in healthcare and super uh, knowledgeable. Anthropic is doing a lot of reports as well. Oracle, I really talked so much about healthcare. This is something where the big, these big LLM players are going to be huge, the big tech players, and probably the, the Pfizer of tomorrow will be AGI driven, LLM driven. It will probably be OpenAI, and I really bet that OpenAI, Anthropic, Okin will do better than Big Pharma with way less people, but agentic processes, new LLM and reasoning models, better data to really be able to, 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 to create the Pharma of tomorrow. Now, biological data is particularly sensitive, though, because it deals, of course, with patients' health and, you know, it, it, it deals with the most personal uh, of all data available yeah. there. How important is it then for Europe to bolster digital sovereignty in this field? It's a really good question. So first, I think like Europe has something to play. So once I, get, I was talking about the US really going super fast in biology for medicine. However, there's no winner today, right, in this field. Uh, in the LLM field, pretty much very difficult on the enterprise side that Anthropic will, the people will do better than Anthropic and for the consumer like Meta, OpenAI, they're, they're winning the game. However, I think on the AI biology, there's, still, there's, there's a place to take, a, a winning place and could, could be a European, uh, so there's something to play here. On the data side, however, data is the key, right? Having a lot of data from patient that are really curated, but also lab data, everything putting into kind of the loop of this intelligence. I think there is uh, a place to, to play. Uh, of course, so, uh, the, the data uh, privacy really matters. And Okin was the first team to develop this federated learning technology to be able to have a remote access to data. However, I think the, 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 the topic of data should be a little move forward because there is a lot of benefit of protecting people's data, uh, even though the risk is still, you know, the still of being taken up by some payers' information and, and having like different, like, you know, a payment of your insurances hasn't been real, I think. But also there is a, a, there is, but there is benefit of it, but the, the risks, I think, are a bit too much put in play. In, in, uh, there's too much uh, uh, told about. I mean, today, I think that data privacy also kills because if we're putting all the data together from the European centers uh, in one spot, probably we will discover so many amazing treatments and things. So yes, data privacy really matters at the individual level. The risk is existent, but not that high. Uh, uh, but there is also, uh, you know, it's also like, should we maybe rethink as a politics for the full Europe, a way to gather uh, patient data at scale and make faster progress against the US or China? It's a question to ask. We talk too much about privacy, individual privacy, because it's more like what the politics want to go. We have also to say that sometimes data privacy can be dangerous because it just slow down innovation. Right, data privacy, if it goes too far, then it could slow down innovation at a time of rising it, yeah. competition. Well, Tomo Close, Zen, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And that's it from the business desk. Thanks, you guys. You go over there with all the day's business news.